What's up, everybody? I'm back with another episode to help you all live your best life. I'm Coach Adamir. I want to welcome all my new listeners, and I want to welcome back everyone else. I really appreciate your support. Um, Look, I'm sure when you guys saw the title for today, you thought to yourself, Coach, are you really going to talk about nuts for 30 minutes? Yes. Yes, I am. And here's why, you guys. As a fitness and nutrition coach, what I've come to realize over the years is the lack of knowledge on proper nutrition and health overall. Look, I grew up blessed enough to be eating mostly home-cooked meals, and my parents were never really big fans of taking us to fast food restaurants, unless it was like between soccer games at like tournaments or if we were on a road trip, right? Like vacation, going camping or something like that. It was a quick stop. Sure, let's get some food, hit the road, keep going. Um, So in that sense, I kind of learned the value and importance of eating like real food at home and and home-cooked meals and not always depending on food from outside sources. But Unfortunately, what I've realized is that's not the case for most people. And on top of that, growing up, we don't really get the proper education in school on nutrition, on what to eat, what's good for us, what's bad for us, stuff like that, right? It's quite the opposite, really, when you look at it. Um, Most advertisements, all the biggest fast food chains, they direct a lot of their ad energy to younger people, younger, susceptible minds. When we were kids, it was like, hey, eat this meal and get a toy with it or get a reward with it, right? Except it was crap. But we didn't know it was crap. We're kids, right? So instead of being educated on real food and health, we kind of almost get brainwashed to not really think about what we're ingesting just to do it. And there's a reward system with it. So what does that lead to? Our current state as, <laughs> as a society that we live in, we're perpetually sick. We're undernourished. We have higher rates of cardiovascular disease. We have higher rates of cancer. We got higher rates of chronic illness and the highest rates of obesity. Right, we're sick, you guys. We're sick because we don't know how to properly nourish our bodies to keep them at optimum levels of performance. All right, and so that's why I'm going to talk about nuts for 30 minutes because my mission is to help people, to help you, to give you the information in nutrition to live a healthier life from within and to guide you in your fitness journey and give you the tools you need to succeed and to also motivate and encourage you because I know that life isn't easy. I know that achieving our goals always is going to seem out of reach and that making a change to better ourselves is scary and challenging. But my goal as a coach is to educate you and give you the confidence you need to live your best life. All right. (laughs) Look, I'm sorry to start the episode like that and for all the gloom and doom sound, but I just I need you guys to know I'm passionate about I'm passionate about what I do. And um, I just I really hope that this show and these episodes can can show you the value and the importance of our mental, our physical, and our emotional health. All right, so first things first, what is a nut, right? We all are pretty familiar with what they are. Let's get technical here. A tree nut is a dried fruit surrounded by a hardened shell, and the seed inside the shell is typically unattached from it. So we, like I said, we're familiar with them. Almonds, Brazil nuts, cashews, hazelnuts, pecans, pine nuts, also pistachios and walnuts. Um, Each of them have really their own um, nutrient mix, like their nutrient makeup, but they all have a similar combination of fats, proteins, carbs, and fiber. All right, so each, uh, you're looking at about 16 grams of fat, six grams of carbohydrate, and five grams of protein um, in, in, in its nutrient mix, all right? Um, I don't know if you noticed, but in that list of nuts, I did not mention peanuts, and that's because they're not actually nuts. Go figure, right? It's in the freaking name. What a misleading freaking bean. Because that's what they are. They're beans. They're actually considered legumes. Um, they're part of the family of beans, peas, and lentils. But because they have a similar nutritional profile to tree nuts, they're categorized as a nut. Um, just a fun fact, I guess. Uh, one thing I did learn, actually, while putting this together is that they're they're what's called um, pleiotropic nutraceuticals. Um, what that means is it has medicinal qualities. So nutraceutical is medicinal. Um, and pleiotropic, meaning it has the capability of producing more than one effect. So it it can, I guess, uh, treat, not treat, I don't want to say treat, but it has medicinal qualities that can um, have a range of of capabilities. All right. So good good option to add to your meals, um, to your snacking and stuff like that. Okay. And the reason why I'm going to go a couple of go through a couple of things here with some some research based information. Um, There's two studies that looked at how nuts affect weight and body fat as well as um, its many health benefits overall. The first study was done from uh, 16 countries. It's 105 different studies put together 
and it was taken with people from 18 to 74 years of age. So a wide range of people, um, good uh, pick from demog different demographics and different cultural um, backgrounds as well. So what they did is they included nuts into a reduced calorie diet, and they saw that that led to improved weight and body composition compared to the control groups that had the same calorie intake but didn't include nuts. So same amount of calories, no nuts, uh, did not improve much in their weight and body composition compared to the people who did consume them in their diets. Okay, so again, good reasons to add these things if you're looking to lose weight, if you're looking to just um, you know get healthier in your life or maybe build more muscle in your life um, or you know get better uh, athletic performance as well. All right, the second study was in 1992, so long, long time ago, um, and I'm kind of quite surprised that Nuts haven't become more popular since then, but hopefully now they will. <laughs> um, researchers found that members of the Seventh-day Adventists, which is a uh, religious group based out of uh, Southern California, um, they ate nuts more than four times a week, and they actually had about a 50% lower risk of fatal and non-fatal cardiac events. So, uh, you know, heart attack, uh, cardiac arrest, things like that. Um, were 50% lower compared to people who consumed less than once a week. So seven days a week, just eat it four days a week, four or five days a week, you should be all right. If you eat it during your work week, you should be all right. I would, uh, I would be pretty thrilled if I could lower my risk of um, fatal and non-fatal cardiac events by 50%. All right, take care of your heart, you guys. Um, since then, it's kind of changed the narrative around being afraid of all fats, I'm sure in the 80s, uh, if you're familiar with that, in 70s, 80s, early 90s, you know, it was low-fat diet, stay away from fat, but it, it kind of pushed unsaturated fats away, which is the, um, the beneficial fat that we can find in nuts, okay? So along with those studies, um, they found several health benefits that uh, would, would come of including nuts in your diet. The first one was in, in relation to cardiovascular disease. They saw that adults at high risk of cardio disease, uh, cardiovascular disease followed a Mediterranean diet, and they supplemented with either olive oil or 30 grams of nuts per day. So they both had a 30% reduction in uh, cardiovascular disease probability, but the group that ate nuts also lowered their risk of stroke by 45%. So if you're noticing, there's, there's definitely so many benefits just to include 30 grams of nuts per day, all right? Reducing your uh, heart health issues by 30% and risk of stroke by 45%, okay? They also saw significant um, benefits in cancer and all-cause mortality. All-cause mortality meaning uh, death caused by disease, um, not by, obviously, accidental death or anything like that. They noticed that eating 28 grams a day, so again, about 30 grams of nuts, reduces cancer incidence by 15% and lowers the risk of death by 22%. I know these don't seem like big numbers, but in the grand scheme of things, any lowering of your risk of disease or death is beneficial in my opinion. Um, hopefully you guys see that the same way. The authors concluded that eating nuts, eating more nuts could potentially prevent millions of deaths a year from cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, respiratory disease, and infections. Now, of course, that's a guesstimate. We don't know how many deaths can be prevented. It's, it's never a solid figure, but considering the percentage of uh, risk decrease and the percentage of deaths caused by these issues, you could see how the potentiality of reducing those deaths is there, okay? Um, and the key reason is that nuts are rich sources of many types of phytochemicals. And if you don't know what phytochemicals are, those are chemical compounds produced by plants. Um, they're essential nutrients for the body. We can only get them from plants. So, you know, that's why we eat our greens and vegetables and things like that. And what that does is it could help reduce the risk of some types of cancer and coronary heart disease because they've been associated with antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, and chemopreventive actions, which basically what that does is, is halts the initiation of several pathogens in your body. So it basically stops it at the source and doesn't let it um, take hold in your body. Okay. Phytochemicals are good for us. They're found in nuts. And then other health benefits that we notice, 
Um, if you guys listen to my protein episode, uh, or I'm sorry, my cholesterol episode, we talked about LDL and bad cholesterol. So it will help you lower your LDL and your overall cholesterol. Um, it's also going to help lower your triglycerides, which uh, those are fats and oils that float in the bloodstream. Too many of them in the bloodstream can elevate your risk of stroke, though. That's what causes clogs and um, plaque buildup and stuff like that. So it, we, it's okay to have a little bit of fat and oil because we need our blood to work, but too much of it can can elevate that risk of stroke. So eating nuts lowers your triglycerides. You'll also have less hypertension, which is basically just high blood pressure. So you'll lower your blood pressure and less inflammation throughout your body. Um, I think I talked about it a few weeks ago. Again, chronic inflammation in our body can lead to disease. So if we lessen the inflammation, it helps us um, lessen the risk of disease in our lives. All right, so we've gone through what the benefits could be to our bodies, to our health, to our weight loss journey, to our muscle building journey, to whatever it is you're trying to do with your health, right? Um, great. Thanks, coach. Now what? How do I add it to my diet? What can I do? Give me some suggestions um, and how, how can I mix it in, right? So the great thing is that it can be a great substitute for other foods um, because they offer a lot of structural and nutritional advantage. So the mix of fat and protein and fiber in a nut actually helps slow your digestion and it improves your what's called satiety or satiety, I believe it. I've heard it said both ways, so either way, but that basically means you're, um, you're satisfied, your taste buds are satisfied in a sense, right? Your, your, your stomach is satisfied. So that t helps tamper down your hunger between your meals. So it just basically keeps you fuller longer, right? That's the basic, um, definition of what, what that's saying there. All right. And the other thing is that the calories and nuts aren't e as easily absorbed as it is from other food, the energy from it. So it just gets, it just passes through the digestive system and, and doesn't even get uh, stored in your body. Right. So another good thing is you get some energy and then the rest just gets released. It gets, the body gets what it needs and gets rid of the rest. Okay. The other thing that's going to help is that the monounsaturated fats in nuts are linked to higher fat oxidation, which basically is fat burning. So higher fat burning and a higher thermic effect of feeding. If you listen to my protein episode, we talked about the thermic effect of, of eating protein. When you eat protein, you burn about 25% of the calories that you're consuming from that protein because your body requires energy to digest, right? So protein has the highest thermic effect of feeding. Nuts come at a close second, all right? And if you're looking for ways to add it to your meals, um, I'll give you a couple suggestions just before we, we finish off here. Pack a handful um, in your lunch or, you know, if you work from home, just pack some from food and snacks before you leave or before you start your day so that you don't just grab random snacks and end up grabbing junk food, right? Um, pack a handful with fruit like apple. You can do grapes, uh, raisins, dried cranberries, stuff like that. Basically, what you can do is even make your own trail mix, right? Grab a... Uh, uh, peanuts, grab almonds, maybe some pistachios, throw them in a Ziploc bag, uh, maybe throw some dried cranberries and raisins in there or some dark chocolate chips. Those will help too. Uh, give you a little sweetness. That'll carry you throughout the day. You don't feel like you're punishing yourself by uh, eating quote unquote healthy food, right? Make it fun for yourself. Make it simple. Make it easy. Um, other things you can do is you can actually grind them in a food processor or if you have like a, a mortar and pestle, just kind of grind it down and you can uh, make it into a powder and add it to shakes, smoothies, add it to oatmeal. You can add it to uh, a salad or things like that, or even noodles. I know um, several foods where you can add peanuts as like a garnish or as a flavor enhancer. Okay. Uh, one thing I, I actually didn't know because I don't really like pecans, but um, chopped pecans would be a great substitute for sugar if you're eating cereal or oatmeal and you want to kind of... Um, you know, liven it up a little bit, and it'll also help provide extra fiber. So chopped pecans are a great substitute. If you don't like them, give them a shot again, maybe in some oatmeal with some raisins and a little bit of uh, ground cinnamon. Just make it nice and um, palatable at least, but not overly sweet, so you're not consuming too much sugar and you don't have a bad crash later. Um, another one, Old Faithful here, peanut butter. And jelly sandwich you can also use almond butter or a mix of peanut and almond butter um, you can use jelly or jam just make sure there's not a lot of added sugar whatever sugar is in there as long as it comes straight from the fruit you should be okay don't worry about it just again make sure there's no added sugar to it okay and then if if you have like side dishes you can do green beans and almonds i know uh, i've seen that made for thanksgiving sometimes or like um 
you know, when you go over for dinner, some people's places, they make simple side dishes. Green beans and almonds is a good one. Pistachios with peas and carrots. That sounds pretty good. And then brown rice and chopped pecans. Again, those pecans are coming up again, but I'm guessing that sweetness and that crunch will really help um, some of those foods be a little more palatable and, and give you a little more um, something to come back and keep eating, right? Because that's what helps. And then you can also cook with them. Um, add them to stir fries. Um, if you're familiar with Thai food, I know Thai food uses it a lot. And like stir fries, they make like a cashew chicken stir fry, um, peanuts over like a shrimp pad tie or something like that. Here's pecans again. You can <laughs> add pecans and a spicy beef and pepper. Um, I might have to try that someday. That sounds really good. So several different ways you can add it. Get creative though, you guys. Make it your own, right? The key to adding something new to your diet is just to make it as simple as possible. Like I said just a minute ago. Um, so that you don't have the option of just grabbing junk food or, or a bag of chips or um, a cereal bar or something like that because those are processed. They have extra sugar. Most of the nutrients have been pulled out because it's all refined. Um, it's not a whole food. So the idea here is to eat your almonds, pistachios, walnuts, pine nuts, uh, pecans, peanuts, everything like that. Eat it as a whole food because even like just eating peanut butter out of a jar – Sometimes they add sugar to it, so you end up eating more because that's what sugar does. It makes you want to get more. Okay, so be careful with those. That's why it's better in a, in a sandwich because you have the bread at least. It'll slow down the absorption of that sugar. Okay, just be prepared throughout your day. Um, prepare your week. If, if you don't have time to prepare a week, prepare two days. Prepare the next day. Just prepare. That's, that's easily the best way to change your habits around food and to see the changes in your body. Okay, just make things based on what you like, on what you enjoy, and just make sure it's nutritious, and as always, make sure it's in moderation. So there you have it, just about 30 minutes on nuts and how beneficial they can be when properly added to our diets. As I said, you guys, at the beginning of today's episode, my sole purpose and my goal is to educate and inform you all on the things that are going to help you live a ha healthier and happier life, all right, and I really hope I was able to do that today. So next week, we're going to get into fitness. Um, I have two ideas I'm going back and forth on. So I'll, uh, I'll do a little more research and pick the one that I think is going to be most beneficial for you all. Um, so stay tuned for that. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the podcast so that you do get alerts when new shows come out. It, they do come out every Monday morning. Um, I want you guys to start your week right. So I, I release them as early as 6 a.m. Monday mornings. That's my time, Pacific time. Um, and if you're on social media... My handle is Coach Adamir. You can follow me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter. And if you need a coach, if you need some guidance, a suggestion, or if you just have a question, um, send me a message and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. All right. So remember, you guys have a good week. Love yourself and go be the best version of yourself. Bye.